Rumorous theories and all around exaggerations. The sketchy world of sports and conspiracy theories. But what's true and what's false? No way. Not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's an urban legend that never happened. We got you. There's a conspiracy theory for pretty much everything in the world. The earth is flat, the moon landing was fake, you name it. Even the wild world of sports has become a place where conspiracy theories come up with some of the craziest explanations for things. I'm Jason Biondo and today we present the 10 craziest sports conspiracy theories ever. And a big shout out to the Snakes Crack Pipe for suggesting this video. Cool name bro, I dig it. Not crack, I uh... I think the name. Be sure to drop your suggestions in the comment section and maybe we'll get to try yours as well. Number 10, Super Bowl 47 Blackout. The Baltimore Ravens are crushing the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 47. Jacoby Jones' 108-yard kickoff return touchdown gave the Ravens a 28-6 lead. It looked to be all but over. The 49ers were done for. San Francisco got the ball back. But suddenly a power outage hit the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Play was stopped for 34 minutes, and the 49ers made good use of the lengthy break. Once play resumed, they scored 17 unanswered points to cut Baltimore's lead down to 5. And suddenly we had a ball game. The fourth quarter wasn't short of drama. The two teams kept exchanging points. But when all was said and done, the Ravens held on for a close 34-31 victory. The Super Bowl win wasn't enough for Ravens linebacker Terrell Suggs, who brought up an interesting conspiracy theory that Commissioner Roger Goodell played a hand in the power outage. Oh, Roger Goodell, he never stopped. He never always got something up his sleeve. Just couldn't let us, just had this one in the landslide, huh? So you thought Roger Goodell had turned he had the lights handed, out? Most definitely. Well, the Ravens won. So even if the NFL orchestrated the blackout, it didn't have an effect on the final outcome. Number nine, Kurt Schilling's bloody sock wasn't actually bloody. The Boston Red Sox trailed the arch rival New York Yankees three games to none in the 2004 ALCS. The Bo Sox rallied to win games four and five at Fenway Park, and they were halfway towards miraculously erasing a 4 nothing deficit. The Red Sox put future Hall of Famer Kurt Schilling on the mound in game six. In seven innings pitched, Schilling struck out four batters while allowing just four hits and one earned run. Schilling put together a clutch performance despite playing with an ankle injury. Without a doubt, the iconic photo of this series was Schilling's bloody sock. It it was the sign of determination, courage, and the will to win. Whatever it takes, Schilling just wanted to win, and the Red Sox escaped with a victory to force Game 7. Of course, some can't help but to think Schilling staged the whole bleeding sock thing. In 2007, Eric Wilbur of Boston.com reported that some believe Schilling used either ketchup or red marker on a cloth for dramatic effect. At any rate, the Red Sox went on to win Game 7, becoming the first MLB team to erase a 3-0 deficit to win the series. They swept the St. Louis Cardinals in the Fall Classic to win their first World Series in 86 years. Oh, and the bloody sock sold for $92,613 at auction in 2013. Hopefully the buyer sought experts just to make sure it wasn't ketchup. Number eight, Michael Phelps and Phelpsgate. Michael Phelps mopped up the competition at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, winning a record eight gold medals. His seventh victory, the men's 100-meter butterfly, did not come without controversy, however. Phelps appeared to have lost to Serbia at first, but he wound up winning by 0.01 seconds. It doesn't get much closer than that. A website called 001ofasecond.com suggests that Serbia actually touched the wall before Phelps. They outlined that the timekeeper was part of the same company that sponsors Phelps. So controversy became known Known as Phelpsgate. The fact that the photos took a while before being released to the public led many to speculate that the Olympic Committee was trying to cover up this scandal for Phelps. But hey, Serbia had none of it. His opponent said there was nothing wrong with losing to the greatest swimmer there has ever been. That's pretty classy. Good for you, Kavik. Number seven, power outage saves Cal Ripken Jr.'s streak. On September 6th, 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. played on his 2,131st consecutive game, breaking Lou Gehrig's record and becoming the new MLB Ironman. Ripken's streak continued for two more years. But according to conspiracy theorists, Ripken's streak should have ended in August of 97. The theory says that Ripken was friends with Kevin Costner and let him stay at his home. However, the theorists say Ripken came home and found Costner in bed with his wife. The theory also suggests that Ripken beat up Costner and told the Orioles he wouldn't be able to attend the August 14th game. Luckily for Ripken, the game against the Seattle Mariners was canceled because of an electrical failure. The conspiracy theorists believe that the Orioles orchestrated the power outage in order to keep off Ripken's streak. Which doesn't sound too far off. All you gotta do is turn off lights. That's it. 
For what it's worth, Ripken said he remembered the game that was cancelled, and that he was ready to play. So that should put an end to the theory. Expect the conspiracists to refuse to stop believing. Number 6 NHL Rig Sidney Crosby Lottery for Penguins The Pittsburgh Penguins franchise was in a disastrous state during the 2004-2005 lockout. The franchise had no money. They had an unstable ownership situation. Mellon Arena was completely outdated and needed to be replaced. The team was so desperate that franchise icon Mario Lemieux had to step up and become a part owner. They had a tiny glimmer of hope though. Canadian kid and teenage phenom Sidney Crosby was entering the 2005 NHL entry draft. If the Penguins could somehow win the draft lottery and get their hands on a franchise changer. Because of the lockout, the NHL used a different lottery system for 05. Teams that missed the playoffs every year from 2002 to 04 were given the best lottery odds at 6.3%. Sure enough, the Penguins won the draft lottery and selected Crosby. Along with Evgeny Malkin, Crosby changed the franchise's fortunes around in short time. The Penguins reached three Stanley Cup finals between 2008 and 2017, winning it all three times. Lemieux was sitting comfortably as the Penguins owner, and the organization got a fancy new home in PPG Paints Arena. It's amazing how much the Penguins turned a corner in one tiny decade, all thanks to a bit of draft lottery luck. No no team needed Crosby more than the Pens, as some think it wasn't so much a tremendous coincidence that they got Crosby, but rather the NHL simply rigged it in order to save a failing franchise. Number 5 NBA Rigged 2002 Western Conference Finals The Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal led Los Angeles Lakers, but the Sacramento Kings in the 2002 Western Conference Finals. Lakers fans and NBA historians obviously remember an epic seven-game series that saw multiple contests go down in the waning seconds. But a large portion of basketball fans and pundits obviously remember the many terrible officiating decisions that benefited the Lakers. Right now, here's Bryant putting the ball on Preston, rejected and fouled. What is happening here? I'm not sure where any foul is. The Lakers faced a must-win situation in Game 6. Trailing the series 3-2, Los Angeles had 15 more free throws in Game 6. Also, Mike Bibby was called for a foul even though Kobe Bryant elbowed him square in the face. And he's in front of him. And he's going to come. Oh, an elbow. Could have been an offensive foul. A big break. An attorney for disgraced NBA referee Tim Donaghy filed a report that said Game 6 was rigged. Donaghy supposedly learned that the referees wanted the Kings-Lakers series to reach 7 games and that they were always acting in the interest of the NBA. Conspiracy theorists also suggest that the NBA wanted the Lakers in the finals over the Kings, since they were obviously a bigger market team. The Lakers won the series in seven and went on to win their third straight NBA championship. Conspiracy theorists will continue to tell us that this wasn't a clean title, though. And that's why we took y'all to game seven, where we beat y'all on y'all floor. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was just, all it took was you and some dirty reps. <laughs> oh. Number four, Goodell smashed Spygate videotapes to protect the Patriots. The New England Patriots may be America's greatest sports franchise here in the 21st century, but the organization has never been immune to controversy. There are the infamous Spygate and Deflategate scandals, plus the infamous Tuck Rule and all the other instances of the team being on the right side of questionable officiating calls. Spygate, of course, was the incident where the Patriots illegally filmed New York Jets coaching signals from the sidelines during a 2007 game. The NFL fined Bill Belichick $500,000 and the organization $250,000 while also forcing them to forfeit their 2008 first round pick. In 2015, ESPN reported that the league had found more illegal videotaping footage involving the Patriots, including a 2002 playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. ESPN's report outlined that Goodell ordered the videotapes to be smashed. League executives did just that, stopping on the tapes while tearing up sheets of paper. And so it's been suggested that Goodell had the videotapes smashed in order to protect the Patriots. The Golden Franchise. Goodell was known for having a strong and close working relationship with Patriots owner Robert Kraft at the time after all. One executive, according to ESPN, had this to say. Goodell didn't want anybody to know that his gold franchise had won Super Bowls by cheating. If that gets out, that hurts your business. Did Goodell really go out of his way to help the Patriots get away with the unfair cheating while trying to save the NFL from public humiliation? There's plenty of evidence to say so. And it's obviously fueled up the conspiracy theories that he wanted to help the Golden franchise get away with some dirty moves. Number three, David Stern rigged 1985 draft lottery for Knicks. 
the New York Knicks were among the NBA's worst teams in 1984 and 85, but they at least had a chance at landing generational talent Patrick Ewing, the projected first overall pick in the 85 draft. Sure enough, the Knicks won the draft lottery and selected Ewing with the first overall pick. However, some believe that NBA commissioner David Stern rigged the lottery to help the Knicks, who were his own hometown team, as well as a big market club that needed a superstar like Ewing. Conspiracy theorists suggest that the lottery was rigged by placing the Knicks envelope on a refrigerator. Therefore, Stern knew which one to grab when announcing the first overall pick. The cold one, of course, rather than the six warm ones. Well, whatever. We'll never know for sure. All we know is that Ewing went on to become an 11-time All-Star. Ewing is now enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Number two, MLB's Juiced Balls Theory. This theory has been around since at least the 90s. Some MLB players, pundits, and fans believe that the league tried to increase offense by adjusting the baseballs to help the hitters. This theory was popular during a time where many of baseball's top sluggers, including Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Alex Rodriguez, and Sammy Sosa were linked to steroids. Do you want to know the terrifying truth? Or do you want to see me suck a few dingers? Dingers! Dingers! dingers. dingers. Mm. Game 2 of the 2002 World Series saw the Anaheim Angels defeat the San Francisco Giants 11-10. Multiple players suggested that the balls were juiced. Angels closer Troy Percival said one of the balls was the hardest he'd ever seen, while shortstop David Eckstein said the balls were tight and small and hard. Offense surged in the MLB during the 2017 season, and Giants pitcher Johnny Cueto said the baseballs were tighter and that they caused his blister injuries. We expect the juice ball theory to go away, well, Never. Number one, Michael Jordan's 1993 retirement was a secret suspension. After leading the Chicago Bulls to their third straight NBA championship in 93, Michael Jordan announced his retirement from the NBA at the age of 30. Jordan cited the death of his father, James, as a key reason for his decision to retire, which makes total sense. MJ would also sign with the MLB Chicago White Sox, wondering if he'd be able to make it big in baseball. However, Jordan was also a well-known gambler at the time. He had been spotted gambling during the 93 postseason. Speculation ramped up that Jordan was secretly suspended from the NBA for gambling. Stop it. Get some help. And so he retired in order to cover up the potential public backlash and embarrassment. David Stern denied this, of course. And MJ returned to the NBA in 95 and helped the Bulls win three straight titles from the 96 to 98 seasons. Did the NBA really suspend the greatest player ever and didn't turn Jordan decided to retire? Eh, it seems ludicrous and impossible, but the conspiracy theorists won't let this one go away. Never. What are some other crazy sports conspiracy theories that won't go away? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, we're on everything. Go subscribe, go follow. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day's a new video. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. On my knees.